Okay, today I'm making this. Well, not this exactly, but I'm replacing this. You see, this is a canister that my wife has used to store sugar in for many years, and recently she broke it. So with a broken glass canister, the possibility of getting a glass shirt in your sugar is always there. So it's out with the old and in with the new, but I'm not making a Disney glass canister. I'm gonna make it look like a Southwestern pot. Here's the pot I'm drawing inspiration from today. This is a Sholo polychrome jar. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it a little more closed at the top. And so that lip, instead of being the opening to a jar, is actually gonna be the handle. And the area that's painted white is gonna be the lid that you can pull off and get into the sugar inside. If you're hoping to follow along with my build today, here's the tools you're gonna need. Clay, a pookie, a gourd rib, a smooth stone, and in this case, I am using one store-bought tool, and that is this needle tool, which will be very useful for cutting the lid out of the jar. So it looks like I have all my materials and tools ready to go. Let's get started. So I'm starting out with a little pancake of clay that I'm gonna press into my pookie. And then I'm just gonna pinch those edges up. I like to have a good inch to a half inch of lip sticking up around the edge of my pookie, so I have something to attach that first coil to. Once that coil is in place, I'll be attaching it using a bonding pinch, a firm downward pinch to bond it or attach that coil to the base of the pot, and then I'll come around and I'll pinch it all to the desired thickness. So at this point it's kind of shapeless and that's where my gourd rib tool comes in. So first I'm going to use it on the inside. Uh, specifically I'm trying to obliterate that coil seam but I'm also kind of shaping the pot. And then once I'm done I'll scrape the outside with the same tool and again getting rid of seams, bumps, divots and then I'll come back around and do the inside again uh, to give the pot more shape. Okay so with this second coil watch for that compression pinch. So first the bonding pinch here, and here's that compression pinch. That's where I'm pulling my two hands together to bring the walls of the pot in and form that rounded shape. Now at this stage, I'm gonna spend extra time and attention to get the shape of the pot right. And that is because by the time I add another coil, I'm not gonna be able to get my hand down inside of there very well. So I'm just taking a little extra time to make sure that I got the shape all right before it's too late to fix it. All right, check out the pinch I use on this third coil. The left-handed thumb bonding pinch. That's right, that's not an easy one. And now I'm just compressing again and pinching thinner and smoothing on the outside and then I'll come around and scrape it on the inside and then scrape it on the outside again just to get that shape right. Make sure it's all symmetrical and even before I add the next coil. And here it is. This little thin coil will form the neck of the jar and because it's so thin, I don't get much vertical distance out of it. So scrape it smooth, make sure it's bonded good and then I'll add another one right on top of that and that should give me just about the height I'm looking for. So what I'll often do is form the pot higher than I actually want it and then trim it down to the desired height. So in this case, I had just a little more neck there than I wanted, so I trimmed the neck down nice and smooth, and now I'm just using a lot of water in my fingers to smooth out the lip. Okay, so I got the pot all formed, but because I'm making a sugar bowl out of this and not just a jar, I still have quite a bit of work to do to get this turned into what I want. So I'm gonna let this rest and kind of firm up for maybe a half hour or so, and then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna cut off the lid, I'm gonna form that little ring on the inside that'll keep the lid from falling in, and I'm gonna close off that jar opening so that the lid is truly a lid that closes off the sugar inside. All right, I'm gonna let this dry, I'll be back in about half an hour. Okay, so the pot has sat for a while and firmed up. I'm ready to cut out and build my lid. Here's my thought process on it. First of all, I want the circle of the lid to be perfectly round. That way, no matter how the lid or the pot is turned, they will fit together right. I don't want them to have to you know, line up a certain way in order for the lid to go on. And so I brought out a bowl from my kitchen that I'm gonna use as a template to draw a perfect circle on the top of this pot.
And there's the lid. I'm gonna set that aside so I can work on it later and just clean up the rim here of the bowl. So now I need to build that little lip that will hold the lid in place. And so I've rolled out a small coil and I'm just attaching it just below the rim and that will keep the lid from falling inside the bowl. I wanna make sure that that lid is still gonna fit in there. Got some dingleberries on it that I'm leaving behind because this hasn't been cleaned up yet, but I, I think that's gonna work just great. Just gotta work on the lid. So now I'm gonna wrap this up and work on the lid. Now this is that little piece of clay that's gonna close off the jar opening. So this was formed as a jar, but it's gonna be a sugar bowl. So I need to close off that opening so that the lid is actually a lid. And so I've got this little piece of clay and I'm just gonna gently kind of attach that so that it looks like a jar, but it's actually just a lid on a bowl. At this stage of the build, I spent an incredible amount of time making sure the lid was gonna fit correctly, making sure that little lip was gonna hold the lid at exactly the right position. And so a lot of time went into this part of the build. The temper in this clay turned out to be a little coarse for the kind of fine work I had to do on this lip. And so I struggled a long time to get this lip right just because of the coarseness of that temper. Okay, I've got the little bowl all formed. I need to let this dry some more and then I'll come back and start scraping it and kind of refining the shape. Uh, especially the bottom where the pookie was. Uh, that's all gotta be scraped and cleaned up. Uh, the edge needs to be cleaned up some more, um, but I need to let it sit and firm up a little bit first. If I seem low energy today, it's because I am. I've been sick this week and I'm literally forcing myself to come out here and film this video. I'm doing a lot better, you know, I'm okay. I'm not pushing myself beyond my bounds, but uh, I'm just tired. I just feel like sitting on the couch because I've been, like I said, I've been sick. At this stage, I'm just kind of refining the shape and cleaning it up by scraping the pot all over with a sharp edge. In this case, I'm using a deer rib bone. And then I'm doing a little bit of stone smoothing on the rim because it's getting drier, but most of that will wait until later. And then again, I'm still working on that lip because it is difficult. Now that the pot is more towards leather hard, the stone smoothing can begin in earnest. And that is just using a wet stone all over to just smooth it out, press those bits of temper in and leave me with a nice surface. Okay, so I've got the pot all shaped and smoothed. At this point, it's ready to be decorated with a layer of slip, but it's getting late. I think it's 7.30 at night. And like I mentioned before, I haven't been feeling well. So I'm gonna call it a night and do this in the morning. First thing in the morning, I can start painting the slip on these and I'm just gonna wrap it up in plastic and I'll catch up with you in the morning. Okay, it's the next morning and I'm ready to get this done. So the pot should be all ready to go. Smooth and dry enough to be slipped. I've got my slips ready. I've got my bright yellow that I'm gonna use for the red areas on the lower portion. And then I've got my white, which I'm gonna use on the lid. As a reminder, here's the pot that I'm using for inspiration. And you can see the top is white. Each of these colors will get at least two coats of slip. So you apply it, let it dry a little bit, and then come back and apply another coat once it's firmed up. And then once that's dried and firmed up enough that it's not sticking to the stone, you could start polishing that. The drier the slip becomes, the more rigorous you can be in your polishing. Now slipping this only took a little bit of time, but waiting for it to dry and then polishing it when it was at the right stage of dryness took most of the day, really all day. Even this morning it was a little damp. So I'm ready to start painting now. 
Uh, now the paint I'm using is my old standby mineral paint, and that is just mixed up one part manganese dioxide, one part copper carbonate, and one part clay. And then there's a small amount of organic binder that's added to that. In this case, I'm using mesquite sap. Now I know I'm cheating, I'm using commercial brushes here. I've been really low on my yucca brushes for a long time, but I am making some more yucca brushes and I have an upcoming video about making yucca brushes, so stand by for that. I like to freehand my designs because I feel that that's what the ancient potters did, and so I don't pencil in my designs beforehand. I do them all freehand. But there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of really great potters draw in their designs with pencil first, so if that makes you comfortable, do it. This is a charcoal firing that I'm doing in my driveway. I like it because it's real easy and it gets nice high temperatures, produces good oxidized pottery. This is just a bag of lump charcoal and a little lighter fluid and light it off. And it'll burn out there for quite a few hours. Basically, I can go inside and ignore it once it stops smoking and come back in a few hours and have finished pottery. So it's pretty convenient for me. Allows me to do other things like edit video while the firing's going on. Doesn't need to be babysat too much. Even after five hours, this stuff was still piping hot. And when I take this lid off, you'll see that the pot came out great, no cracks. Uh, and that yellow slip oxidized to a beautiful red color. What do you think of my new sugar bowl? I think it came out really good. There are a couple places where the white outlining of the black design is kind of peeling off like it didn't stick to the red slip underneath. Other than that, it's perfect. And it fired really hard. It rings like a bell. So I think my wife's really gonna like it and get some use out of it. Now I know what you're probably wondering. Why does your sugar bowl have a round bottom? It's traditional in the American Southwest for pots to have round bottoms. And I made a video over here explaining why that is. So go check that out and then you'll know why my sugar bowl has a round bottom. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.